it's sad to see how much debt our country's in and also on an individual level, just families. Everyone's in debt, right? Your house is your savings account, but nobody really even owns their house outright. They probably have a mortgage. You're in debt for student loans and they're talking about, you know, canceling those. Um, most people, I think there was like record credit card debt that they reported recently. That's really sad. We're just this nation that consumes and all of our stuff is produced elsewhere. And we're not making things anymore. And there is, there's not a lot of opportunity. People graduate with these expensive degrees and then they can't find work. I mean, I certainly was one of those people. I graduated from private universities and then my first job paid less than $30,000 a year. You know, it's like, and then how do you catch up? Michael Saylor said this before on his interviews, how does someone like that exit and try to purchase their first house to try to get things going, to try to have assets? And so I think that Bitcoin presents an opportunity for more financial inclusion and for this opportunity to save money again and accumulate capital, accumulate an asset that's going to go up in value as opposed to the dollar that's just crumbling in purchasing power. So that's my hope. And I, I hope that you know, here it's going to be used more as a savings technology, I think, first, whereas in developing nations, it does have more utility as a medium of exchange, which I think is inspiring, too.